How's it going everybody? In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to get Redis up and running alongside of your WordPress site. And this will just make your WordPress site so much faster. So I highly recommend you watch this so you know how to do it on your own. I'm going to be do covering everything from scratch. So we're going to be getting a digital ocean droplet set up that has WordPress on it. Then we're going to be installing Word or, uh, Redis on that server. Then we're going to be installing the PHP extension for Redis. And then we are going to be installing a WordPress plugin that will kind of bring it all together and get the WordPress data into Redis. So if you are new here, make sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to make sure you get notified of my weekly WordPress tutorials. All right, let's jump into it. All right, and like I said, we're going to be using DigitalOcean and this is just to give us kind of all a common starting ground. Um, and if you use my link in the description, you get 25 bucks when you spend 25 bucks and then I get a little kickback and that's going to help me with my bill. <laughs> so it doesn't cost you anything extra. So if you can, and you're already going to get sign up with DigitalOcean, use my link. I'd super appreciate it. Uh, so then once we have a DigitalOcean account, we're going to create a DigitalOcean droplet. So what you can do is just go up here to the top, right? Click a droplets and it's going to create a server. And we need to tell it what kind of server we want. So we're going to go into the marketplace right here at the top and we're going to scroll all the way down to WordPress on 18.04. That's on Ubuntu and that's going to give us everything that we need to get WordPress going. Got a on the $5 a month plan here. And then we're just going to pick a data center close to me, get all of my SSH keys on here. And I'm just going to call this WP Redis and create droplet. Now WP Redis is completely arbitrary. Name it what you want to name it. Um, and this usually only takes about as long as it takes to run like NPM install on something, but I'm going to pause the video and it will magically be done. All right. So now that this is all done, I'm going to take this IP address here. I'm going to copy it and we're just going to visit the URL directly and it should give us a whole lot of nothing. That's because you need to actually go to the terminal, which I'm going to clear right here and exit out of the one that I was using before. Oops, a little behind the scenes action right there. Um, so do SSH root at the IP address and it should say, oh, are you sure you want to do this? And you say yes. And then it's like, all right, whatever. And then you want to enter in the domain name. So the domain name should just be the IP address in this case. If you're just experimenting like me, if you're trying to spin up this like like a production type thing, then you're going to do your actual domain name. But that's the little tricky thing there is it will actually um, put that into your WP options table. And so if you put in like something like test.com or whatever, it's going to keep redirecting you to test.com because that's what WordPress thinks that you want to go to. So it's just going to ask you for a few more pieces of information, like your email address, a username and password, which will you'll use to log into the WordPress dashboard. And uh, we're going to just name this WP Redis. And would you like to do let's encrypt for your SSL thing? I'm not going to do any SSL th stuff today. And then it's just going to run through the rest of its steps. It's going to install WordPress and it's going to install a couple plugins that it just gives you out of the gate just for security. But once we have that, we should just see nothing here. And so now that we have this, we can go back to that IP address in the window and then voila, we have our WordPress installation. So super quick, right? Well, we need to get Redis installed on here. Just that's actually something that you install on your machine. This is not any sort of uh, just plug in that you install and then all of a sudden you get everything. So we have to do some work here. And so if you're planning on doing this on your own, you're going to need a server that lets you do this kind of stuff. It's you're going to need to be able to install extensions and all that. So if you're running on like a vanilla Bluehost thing, you're probably not going to be able to do this. So first step, we're here at the root. So what we need to do is we're just going to run an update. Um, just make sure everything is kosher and in tip top shape. Once that's done, we're actually going to install um, Redis itself. And I'm going to clear this out after every command. So it's up here at the top. So we're going to run sudo apt install redis dash server. And we're going to let that do its thing. And we're going to say, yes, that's going to take 3,012 kilobytes. That's fine. And once we do that, um, which shouldn't take very long, 
All right, nice. Um, we're just gonna let it do its thing. I'm gonna pause the video again, because this one also takes a second. All right, so that one is done now. So let's clear off this terminal. And then what we're going to do is we need to get into the Redis config file. So like many other things that you've probably dealt with in the past, there's a config file. So we're gonna just do sudo nano slash etc slash redis slash redis dot conf. All right, so now that we're in here, we're going to change a few settings. The first one that I want to do is the system D right here. And uh, we want to give it this just kind of, I guess, acknowledgement to the rest of the server that's going to say when it's ready and when it's not ready. And all you have to do if you're on this digital ocean thing is do, um, instead of supervised no, so supervised system D, and then that's all you need there. The next thing that we're gonna do is change the max memory. And this is just to set the limit of how much memory this thing can use, and then we'll be setting on what it can do once it runs out of memory. So what we're gonna do is just set it to 108 megs. And then this next item down here on the list is the max memory policy. And this will select what to remove when max memory is, is reached. And so there's a couple different um, things that you can choose from. And the one that we're going to choose is this all keys LFU. And this, what this will do is, uh, let's just go down here and change that. Uh, I gotta pull up my notes here. It's called all keys LFU and LFU stands for least frequently used. So it's gonna start plucking out of the store which ones are used the least. And so we're going to just uh, take this and save those changes and call it good there. So now that that has been done, what we're gonna do is we're going to restart Redis just so it gets all of those new changes. So sudo system control restart redis.service and then it won't give us any sort of response. And then what we're gonna do is just do sudo system control status redis and that should give us this nice little active message right here. And then so what we can do is actually start using the Redis CLI. So you can type Redis-CLI and then it's going to change what this looks like over here on the left. And that's going to tell us what port and um, IP that's running on. So that's running on our machine on port 6379. And what you can do is run ping and then it should return pong all cutely. And that means that we know that we are good to go. So I'm going to exit out of that. And so that is installing Redis on the server. We are 100% good there. But what we need to do next is we need to install a PHP extension that lets PHP talk to Redis. And this one's a little bit more complicated to set up in this server because the DigitalOcean droplet that they give you out of the box doesn't have some of the things that we need. So we're gonna need to install those. So what we need to do first though is you, type in wget and then this address, which will there'll be a link in the description to this so you don't have to look at this and type it all out. But we're get, grabbing the PHP uh, Redis GitHub archive and we're gonna be downloading that. And so once that is downloaded, we are going to uh, try and unzip it and it's gonna fail. Unzip master.zip because unzip isn't found. So this is one of those dumb little things where you have to install unzip um, just with apt install unzip. And then once that's good, you can unzip master.zip and we're good to go there. So we're gonna clear the terminal. And then what we need to do next is we need to technically, I'm gonna skip ahead so we can also see the error that you'll run into if you don't do this is we're going to look at our file structure. And so we have that master.zip and then we have PHP Redis dash master. And so how you can install this PHP extension is you can go into PHP Redis dash master. And then what you're gonna need to do is PHP IZE, that's going to initiate the installation of this extension, but oh no, there is no command for that. So what we have to do is you can just do apt install php-dev and that's going to give us all the stuff that we need for um, installing php extensions so this will take a second as well i'm going to pause the video but once we get back this should be good to go 
All right, and then so it's going to ask which INI file we want to keep. We're just going to keep the local one. It's kind of a scary message, but it should be good to go. All right, we're going to clear out that. And now we can finally run PHP IZE and, and get actually everything installed. So you first type PHP IZE, and then you type dot slash configure. So it's going to run all of its configuration stuff for us. And then you need to run two special commands after that. So let's clear that out. And then we're going to run make and then double ampersand sudo make install. And that's going to install the things that it needs to do. And at that point, we will be um, having our PHP extension installed 100%. The last thing that we actually need to do to get it like across the finish line here is if we take this guy here. We want to add a new redis.ini file. And so what you can do is you run sudo echo extension equals redis.so. And then you want to put that into slash etc slash php slash seven point whatever. And in this case, I'm on 7.2 in PHP. And then you do slash apache2 slash conf.d slash redis.ini. So once you've uh, done that, it should give you a nice little message here, or no message, sorry. And then we're going to restart Redis and restart Apache. I know there's a lot of fun command line things going on right here, but I promise it's all worth the wait. So we run Apache control restart. It's gonna give us, oh, you didn't set up the server name. That's fine, it still worked. And then we are done. So we've installed Redis, we've installed the PHP extension for Redis, and then now we can just make sure that uh, we actually can connect it to our WordPress site. So let me kind of show you what is going on in Redis right now. So we have Redis CLI, and then we are gonna type keys, and then what that, or keys, and then it's gonna ask for a pattern. So what keys do we wanna see? We wanna see all the keys. There's no keys, that's fine. We aren't expecting anything in there at that point. So what we need to do now is we need to actually get the WordPress plugin installed um, that will connect all of our WordPress data to this instance of Redis, and then it can start populating itself uh, with data. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to slash WP admin here on my uh, WordPress installation, type in my username and password, then blow up the screen a little bit, make sure everybody can see it. And then we're going to add a new plugin. And then we're going to search for plugins called Redis Object Cache. And so this is the first one you're going to um, see pop up, this icon, all this kind of good stuff. And then we're going to install it and activate it. And then down here under uh, settings, we will have a new option called Redis. So we're gonna click on that guy. And then all it is is enable or disable. So we're gonna enable the object cache. And if all goes well, these two things should be populated as such. The status should be connected and then the client should be PHP Redis. It's going to show a little all the information about our servers here. Let me see if I can pull this up. Um, and then it's going to have our host and then our port, the database. Now, don't get confused on that. Database zero is actually fine. That's just the first database in the list. So that's the one that we want. And we're not using a password. We could have set up a password, but since we're on localhost and we're making it so it's in it defaults to protected mode, there's really no, I mean, you can set up a password. I'm, I'm just not doing it. Um, and then, so if we go back to our terminal here and we do keys, oops, keys, everything, we now are starting to see this populate with our data. And so we can see right here, we just reloaded the page that we were on and we have 19 keys um, in here already. So what we can do is we can go to the front of our site Oh, just look at all these cool posts. Let me just kind of navigate around. We went to an individual post as a comment. Now, if we were to uh, run 
uh, keys again. Oops, keys. And then the star. Now all of a sudden we have 39. So this is all configured to the point where we're getting our WordPress data into Redis, and this will start to drastically increase the speed of our site. Now before you do any of this, just make sure that you back up your site if you're doing this on something that's going to be like your staging or production environment. So uh, just be careful there. Um, and other than that, that plugin pretty much takes care of the rest. You can kind of uh, start to clear the caches if things get a little bit too crazy or anything like that. Just flush the cache like that, or if you want to just turn it off completely, just disable the cache and then you're fine again. So anyway, there are so many awesome reasons why you should be using Redis on your site right now. Hopefully this walkthrough was helpful for you. If it was, make sure to leave a like on the video and make sure to leave a comment. Let me know if this is, you found this helpful or not. Anyways, thanks for the support guys. I appreciate you watching and I will see you in the next one.